morning grade 12 so today we're going to be speaking about representing organic compounds so this lesson is all about the different ways in which we can depict or show or illustrate an organic compound and it's dependent on what we ask it's dependent on a lot of different things but it's basically just different ways of showing the same thing so if you look on the screen here there's three ways of depicting an organic compound these are all different types of organic compounds so as you can see here is more like a picture you can see each each atom is shown and there's lines the lines are the bonds this one there's no lines so these have different names so let's go to the next slide this little mind map I'd like you to take down in your book this shows the three different ways in which we can represent organic compounds so first of all here I have the molecular formula so a molecular formula looks like this it just shows the atoms and the number of atoms in the compound. In other words, this organic compound that I've highlighted here has three carbons and eight hydrogens. Um, illustrating it in this way, it's known as the molecular formula. The structural formula looks like this. It shows the structure of the compound. It shows the bond lines. And this one is condensed structural formula. So it's a little bit more detailed than the molecular, but it doesn't show the bond lines. Okay, so here's a little mind map. It'll be good to put this in your book and draw an example of each. This is the same mind, same mind map as before. It's just that this one has the definition associated with each of the different types. So this is the definition of molecular formula. A molecular formula is a chemical formula that indicates the type of atoms and the correct number of each in a molecule. So for example, this molecular formula shows that this organic compound has three carbons and eight hydrogens. Okay, the type of atoms, so carbon and hydrogen, and the number. Then we've got structural formula. So as you can see here, it shows which atoms are attached, attached to which within the molecule. So for example, I can see that this carbon atom over here that I've highlighted is attached to a hydrogen, another hydrogen, another hydrogen, and a carbon. And the atoms are represented by the chemical symbols, so a C for carbon, an H for hydrogen, and the lines show the bond. As you can see, these are single lines, which means single bonds. If we try to represent a double bond, it'll be a double line. And then the co condensed structural formula, it's a notation that shows the way in which atoms are bonded, but it doesn't show the bond lines and I will go through a more detailed example of this later but for now this is the three different ways we can represent organic compounds and here's the definitions of each okay so let's look at this in more detail representing organic compounds the molecular formula so a molecular formula like I said there's a definition we can ask this definition it's in italics it's from your exam guidelines you need to learn it for example in this co in this compound we have two carbons, so you can write here two carbons and six hydrogens. These are all examples of molecular formulae. As you can see in this one, we have a bromine atom attached to this compound. In this one, there's an oxygen and an additional hydrogen. We'll go through all of this at a later stage. You will know how to name these compounds. You will know what groups they're from. So at this moment, don't worry. I just want you to recognize that if you see something that looks like any of these, this is the molecular formula. Then the structural formula. So it shows, again, which atoms are attached to which others within the molecule. Like here, you can see we have two carbon atoms and one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogen atoms. So as you saw on that um, slideshow now, this is the structural formula. It shows the structure of the compound. It shows that the carbon is attached by single bonds here, single bond here to a hydrogen, single bond here, single bond here. If I were to take this organic molecule and I were to write the molecular formula for this, I would say, okay, cool, I have carbon. How many carbons do I have? Two of them. And I have hydrogen. How many hydrogens do I have in this molecule? One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the structural formula and this one is the molecular formula. But both of these are representations of the same compound. This one gives us a little bit more information because we can see the bond lines. We can say which atom is attached to which. Okay. Then 
we can take a look at these. This is more examples of structural formulae. Again, you can see the bond lines. You can see which atom is attached to which others. It's like a picture, basically, of the molecule. Remember, these in real life are 3D, so this is like a 2D representation of the molecule. Here's another one. In this one, you can see there's a bromine atom attached there. Here, there's a double bond with the oxygen. Here, there's an OH group at the end, and we'll learn how to name each of these types of atoms. Then the last way of representing an organic compound is with a condensed structural formula. So it's kind of like a structural formula, but it's a condensed version. It doesn't show the bond lines. So if you look at this structural formula over here on the right that I'm moving with my mouse, this one here. This structural formula has one, two, three carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens. So instead of writing the molecular formula, which would be C3H8, I can do a condensed structural formula. So if you look here, this is the condensed version of this. So let's see how it works. So here's a carbon. Okay, the first carbon is attached to one, two, three hydrogens. That's why it says CH3. The second carbon is attached to two hydrogens. That's why it says CH2. Then the last carbon is attached to three hydrogens. That's why it's CH3. I hope that makes sense. So now you guys are going to quickly pause the screen, tell me what you think. Is this one molecular, structural, or condensed? Okay, this one is condensed. What about this one? That's structural. And this one, I kind of put this in here as a little bit of a, a thingy. This isn't exactly a structural, but it's not exactly condensed either. It shows bond lines, so it's more structural than anything else. But here, this, this isn't correct. This isn't a fully, a full structural one. This should show three lines with the H's on. Okay, so you won't get stuff like this in your CAPS curriculum. This is a molecular formula, and so is this one. Okay. This one at the bottom here is a structural formula. Now, just to recap, every carbon must have four bonds. We spoke about this in lesson number one. So this carbon here has four bonds. One, two, three, four. If you look at this middle molecule, this carbon that I've highlighted here also has four bonds. One, two, three, four. So does this carbon. One, two, three, four. And you can check in organic chemistry, Every carbon atom must have four bonds. And why four? Where does the number four come from? The number four comes from the fact that there's four valence electrons. Then every hydrogen atom must have one bond. So you can see here, this hydrogen atom is a single bond there. Every halogen atom must have one bond. So a halogen is Br, Cl, F, or I, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Okay, those are the halogens. And if they're attached in an organic molecule, they only have one bond. Every oxygen, if it's attached alone to a carbon, must have two bonds. So if you look here, this carbon is attached to this oxygen by a double bond. Here, in this case, there's an oxygen attached to a carbon, but the oxygen is also attached to a hydrogen, so it's an OH. There, it's single bonds. But if the oxygen is attached alone, it's a double bond. Okay? And these are the definitions that you need to go over. So we did organic molecules and hydrocarbons in lesson number one. You should have them in your book. And these three are the new ones from this lesson. Just to go back, they are on this mind map. They're in italics. This needs to be in your book. Please, grade 12s, make sure you take them down. Make sure you understand the difference between a molecular, structural, and condensed. And before I end this lesson, I'm going to give you one more example. This molecule, this organic compound, organic molecule that we're talking about on this page is called butane. Don't worry about the name now. We'll learn how to name them later. But butane can be represented by its molecular formula, which is C4H10. C4, because there's four carbons, count here, one, two, three, four. There's ten hydrogens. If you count here, there'll be ten hydrogens. That's the molecular formula, just showing the atoms, the types of atoms and the number of them in the molecule. Then this is the structural formula. You can see the bond lines and show which atoms are connected to which other ones. And if I want to do the condensed structural formula, it'll look like this. 
and it's color coded to match the structural formulas here so you, you can see how they got it this would be a nice example to copy down in your book so please do that for me as well awesome guys i'll see you in the next video